Morning guys, it's Twizzy Mods time. Um, I've got a really dodgy photo, I don't know what's going on with that this morning. So I've just quickly taken one of the back wheels off because um, I want to see what the weight is. And the reason for this, Sarah's going to be really happy with this. Um, <laughs> the reason for this is, I just, yeah, I want to see what the weight is because um, I need to sort out the handling on this Twizzy because it is a nightmare. Um, the rear is fine actually, but it's just the front, the understeer is just getting to the point where, around here, where the road's a little bit wet, you just turn the wheel, nothing happens. So first thing I want to do, I want to sort out the handling on this. Um, this is going to be a bit of a kind of a process because what I want to do ultimately, the reason why I've got this car and I've kind of just been sitting on this like I have a lot of other projects, um, is to sort of try and improve the performance more. Now I've already got a power box in there. Um, now something interesting has happened with the power box. Um, Kenneth has released a new one, um, which he's actually sent to me. It's on the way here now. So um, we're going to test that out in this video. But also, yeah, I want to look at the possibilities of changing the wheel and tyre setup um, to try and get better sort of handling. Now the biggest problem, of course, with the Twizy is because it's lightweight. You, you're kind of at this, at this kind of balance where if you put more weight on the, on the wheels, then it's going to slow things down. Of course, if you change wheel sizes, then it's going to slow down acceleration or make you know, the speedo not read right or kind of you know, make it look like you're going faster. Probably actually would go a bit faster with bigger wheels on. But you're going to lose the acceleration and the twizzy is all about acceleration well for me it is it's, it's all about acceleration that kind of zero to 30 miles an hour and then kind of you know upwards see this wheel and just see what it actually weighs um i'm expecting it to be pretty pretty light uh no 10 kilos so i thought it might be a bit lighter than that so this is a 13 inch wheel it's a 14580 which i mean look at the profile on that it's, it's a bit of a beast, but I mean, it's actually a nice looking wheel though, when you think so as well. So we've got a couple of options, haven't we? We could put a bigger rim on here. So, I mean, obviously this is an 80 profile one. So if we went to like a 15 inch, um, you know, we'd probably come out about the same size if we put like a, a 40 profile or 45 profile tire on it. Probably not a good idea to put such a low profile tire on it because the suspension is very, very hard on the Twizy anyway. So you want a little bit of comfort factor retained. So I've been looking around on the forums and stuff and I've seen that some people have used um, 15 inch wheels and maybe like, um, you know, like a 50 profile tire. It looks quite meaty and that's kind of what I'm trying to go for because I mean, it, you can see it out there, look at the front, it looks so weedy to me and this is, this is one of my biggest problems with it. I know that's like a looks thing, but that is also causing the understeer massively because of those tiny little um, biscuit tin wheels. They're just really, really thin. Let's stick this back on the car anyway. Right, I just love how easy this little car is to work on. Like it's just, it just weighs nothing. You just lift it up, just take the wheel off. Right, so you can see you've got this three bolt pattern. Um, you're not gonna find any rims with that on. So you have to use an adapter. And there is a company um, called Elia Tuning, um, which make an adapter for the, for the Twizy. Um, but it's like basically four discs with a 25 mil spacer. Um, and then it converts this to like a four by 100. So then you can fit pretty much any wheel on there. Right, I'm in the workshop. There's not really much room in there anymore because I've got all these bikes and stuff in here. Um, so I've ordered the adapter plates. So the, the spacers, I've ordered those. So they should be here. I don't know, it's gonna take like five days or something for those to get here. Um, so that's that. So yeah, the next step is to try and find some wheels um, which are gonna sort of benefit from performance you know, not be too heavy and also look good as well, um, like all of this stuff. Now, there's lots of different things I've seen people doing, as I say, and yeah, it, there's, there's a lot of inspiration out there. So I think we can go to a seven inch wide uh, rim um, with like a seven inch tire or seven to seven and a half inch tire on there. And I think that will be good for the back. For the front, you might need to narrow the tire down a slightly, although I'm kind of reluctant to do that. I'd rather just keep it, probably keep it the same just to get that maximum amount of um, tread on the on the actual road. Right, just back in the office then. So this is the rim I'm looking at. Look at that, how good is that? So 15 inch that is, um, and a seven inch wide. I think they do like an, an, a 7J or an 8J width. Um, got my voice today, I'm sorry about this guys. But yeah, this looks so nice, doesn't it, with this extra sort of, this shiny rim. They do lots of different, um, different designs, different colors on this. But I just need to find out the weight of this because I've been sucked in on the on the looks on this this one, but <laughs> I don't know how heavy it is. Well, I've been having trouble, even though their website, they don't say the weight. Um, but I have found a website um, where there's people talking about it and saying like, the 15 by seven one is light, like 15 pounds. What's that in, in uh, 
kilograms, 6.8, 6.8 kilos. That's without the tire, obviously. How much does a tire weigh? I mean, a big tire, like, like a 205, 15, it can't weigh that much. Uh, what do you reckon? So they look like a goer, don't they, guys? Um, look at this as well. This is, um, I'm just looking on the forums, and um, this is one of the forum users. This is quite a while ago, um, but I really like the look of it. So these are 15s on this, um, and it, yeah, I think that just looks really good. So I did actually do a mock-up in Photoshop, not with those wheels, because I don't think we're gonna be able to do it because of the sort of deep look and all of that. Um, but this was when I was looking at Team Dynamics wheels. Um, so lightweight wheels, like motorsport wheels, these are 13 inch, just replacing what was you know on the, on the Twizy originally. Um, and then obviously they, they would be wider than this, so this isn't really a true um, representation at all. But I just looked at this and just thought, yeah, maybe. Obviously you wouldn't have the arches or, or fenders on there. Um, because the, the tire is going to be too thick for it, but yeah, I looked at it. I thought, yeah, that that would it would work. But I think the others are better. Right, guys, it's a couple of days later. Nothing's happened with the Twizy yet. My voice is still weird and deep and all of that. Um, but it's funny. I was actually emailing my good friend Kenneth, who makes um, Kenneth Nielsen, who makes the power box for the Twizy. You might have seen this in the other videos that I've done. So the power box is basically like a, a performance upgrade for the Twizy, and it's it's not like a kind of normal performance box. Um, it kind of doubles the the horsepower and like doubles the torque as well. So you just plug this thing in um, to the car, and it just turns it into a completely different vehicle. Um, so funnily enough, I was I was emailing him, and he said, oh. Um, it's funny that you've emailed because I, I was wanted to actually send you um, the new version, a new version of, of the power box. So this one is supposed to be kind of like a more discreet version of the power box. It's got Bluetooth um, rather than the screen. So you don't actually have to have the box in the car with the screen showing you all the information. It's basically just kind of like a Bluetooth module. And then the cool bit is that it actually connects to your phone and just shows and you can program your car via your phone, via an app on your phone. Um, so really excited to try that out. He actually sent me some firmware updates for the for the power box that I've got, the original one. So last night I was kind of messing around with that, like kind of installing um, you know the new software on there, and that is supposed to support Bluetooth as well because there's a hidden Bluetooth module in um, the power box device, which not everyone will know, um, which allows it to work with the app. It's been a while since I spoke to Kenneth actually, but on more conversations with him, it seems like he's been really busy and he's he's created a bunch of new products. Um, for kind of performance enhancing the Twizy, which is just really, really cool. Um, ultimately, my aim is I want to extend this even further and kind of go higher voltage on the Twizy, but that's probably going to be a topic for another video. Um, I want to get this car going really quick. Um, I mean, with the power box, it is a different car completely. It's just absolutely awesome. 100 newton meters of torque, um, and you know, somewhere in the region of like. I don't know, it's like 25 kilowatts or something like that, but it's it sounds doesn't sound a lot um, for a car, but the car doesn't weigh a lot. That's that's the that's the thing, and it is a lot of fun. Hence the reason why I'm sort of starting these upgrades to try and make it even better, you know, with the with the wheels and everything else. Anyway, let's just have a look at the um, the power box that turned up. So here it is, seriously neat. That's the ODB um, plug on the end, so that just goes junk into where the um, socket is, which is in a kind of nice place in the Twizy. It's just under one of the um, in the glove compartment, or, or one of them. Um, so that's that. Um, you get like a programming lead, and what else is this? This is this looks like a splitter. I'll have to have a look in the manual and see what um, that's actually used for. It's got a switch on here as well, so I need to check that. And that this, I'm presuming, is the um, the remote control which they um, which he uses for them. So. Yeah, it's the remote. So the whole kind of power box system, it, it kind of works on profiles. So you can select, you know, like eco, um, normal mode, and then like sport mode, and then this, this D button usually just gets you into settings and stuff like that. So I'm not sure exactly how that works with the, um, with the app. Probably allows you to just select it on the fly without having to use the app. Um, but I will be checking this out and just see, what, see how it works. Okay, so I've just found out what the other ODB socket's for, um, the lead. It's basically just to protect the um, the Twizzies on board port because it can be a little bit flimsy that um, socket in there. You do notice it moves a little bit, so it's just included another one in there, um, like an adapter, so you don't you know stress that connector. And it's got an on-off switch on it as well, which is pretty cool. Which I'm going to use on my, well, I use on this, but I'll use it on my um, my V2 power box. 
Right, I've got the cup of tea. I'm in the Twizzy. I've got the Android device here as well. Um, so I've just gone for the instructions and installed the Twizzy um, app. If we open up the Twizzy Powerbox app, and you get this picture of the Twizzy there, and then it says it's trying to connect to something, and it does that so quickly, I was like, hang on a minute, we haven't got anything connected. Um, my device is down there, but of course I think it's connected to this, because this one is the Powerbox V2, which has got Bluetooth. So that was pretty surprising that that just connected to it, even though the car's off. Anyway, that's one thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this power box, which I've already been using. Um, in my, that's my normal power box. I'm gonna disconnect that from the ODV port. What I'm gonna do, one-handed, is show you in there. This is another thing I've got, which is basically for the for the uh, 12 volt battery. So all the wires for the, for the power box are here. Well, it's just one wire. So if we disconnect, We'll disconnect that power box and then we'll just plug this one in and then we'll do it the proper way with the Bluetooth app and then I can experiment with Bluetooth on the other um, thing in a minute. But so there you go. So this is the um, this is the dongle obviously and that is the ODB um, interface. So if we go in here um, <clears throat> can't I'll show you clearly but you can see it there it is there. So if we plug this into there can't see the LEDs because they're the other way, they're on the other side. Um, but there it is anyway. So if we come out of this and just see, so go Twizzy Power Box, hit that, see if it will actually find it. So it's in Bluetooth. Right, got it. Okay, so it is connected to the um, to the car. So let's turn the car on, fire that up, and then. Hopefully, there you go. So stuff started to happen on here. So we can see battery temperature, um, motor temperature there, might be a bit of discrepancy there, battery, um, battery volts. I think this will display, yeah, all the cell voltages. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here, but basically what I'm gonna try and do is tune it so so I can show you the process of how you would tune it. So all we've done basically is, is just plug in that dongle into the ODB socket on the, on the car, turn the car on, um, and then you know open the Bluetooth app and it's connected straight away. I mean, it couldn't be easier than that. So setup. So basically we've got a setup here, um, and this is very similar to the Powerbox 2. So you, could, you can hit tuning and you can select what tuning level you want. And then we can go to, so you've got light, medium, max power, original tuning, um, and then a Twizy 85 to a 45, I think that takes it, um, converts one to the other. So if we hit max power, please wait a moment. So you hear the beep on the, um, the that's basically the BMS beep in there. So it's saying on here, it's just five more seconds. Tuning in progress, and you get the tuning happening. And that should normally goes out to like 80 or something like that. There you go. Tuning completed, turn off and on the ignition key, and you're ready to drive. So we can turn off, turn back on again. We might have to, I don't know if we have to wait any, any minutes or anything like that before, before it does anything. Um, so we've got different modes here, but like charging, you can set the charging um, percentage you can set your foot brake regen, I think it's at 250, which is probably all right. Um, so, you know, lots of settings which you can change here. Um, if you're familiar with the power box, then you know what they are. But basically, that has done it. So that has made this into um, a high power Twizy, just those simple steps. Um, so how cool is that? So now there's obviously the other options you've got, as you can see all the information, like here, we could see before, um, battery temperature, motor temperature um, and then you've got these three driving profiles here so these can be changed by the remote not this particular one because that one was for the other power box but I forgot to bring it out here so um, you can change those by the by the remote um, so eco is kind of like a well, it's what it says it's an eco eco mode normal gives you a good amount of performance 
Um, it's just not quite as much as, um, as Sport. So Sport obviously is the one that I use pretty much most of the time, um, unless I'm trying to increase range or something like that. But the Sport mode is, is brilliant. Like it's, it's 100 Newton meters of torque. Um, the rear wheels spin up, you know, under, under kind of high power. So it, it's just an awesome thing. It transfer, like the car is just like a go-kart. It's just so much fun. So just running and got the remote, you can see it's the same as that one there. Um, so when you push these buttons here, you see, so if you push B, it goes into normal mode, push C, goes into sport mode. Uh, it's really cool, really responsive as well. I think it's more responsive than the um, Powerbox V2 actually. Seems a bit quicker. Now I'd quite like to see if you can change this to display some of the other things like the power that you're putting out um, at the time and RPM and stuff like that. But I think this is an early version of this app, so I'm not I'm not sure exactly what's what's coming. but. Yeah, and I've, I've stuck this thing um, up in this little bracket. So you can imagine what's gonna happen going forward. You can have all this information on the screen, um, and then obviously, because this is an Android device, then you can flick back to Google Maps for your sat nav. You know, you could do all sorts of stuff with this. I mean, you know, the, the possibilities are endless for this, this display. But yeah, anyway, I'm excited to give it a try. So I'm gonna wax fault mode, and um, we'll go and give it a go. It's a bit, bit uh, awkward out here, so I'm probably gonna slide all over the place, but it should be fun. really good then guys I mean it feels like the other power box um, just as much power as, as that one provides so there's no difference there um, just in a completely different setup and a bit cheaper as well I think this one is yeah I'm just waiting for this car to move out of the way and then I can um, and I can go gotta watch this thing in the wet in sport mode because it really wants to just spin round once you put the power on so these controls here you just basically just tap these and it will turn things on and off so you can turn your regen braking off which is quite useful if you're going on kind of like motorways or kind of dual carriageways because you don't want it to kind of start braking when you come off the throttle, not necessarily. So also when it's really slippery, it's a good idea to turn that off because um, there's no traction control in this car. So, you know, you could potentially lock the back wheels up if you have the regen up too high. And then auto and manual, if you actually select that, then it will just go through these automatically. Um, but I usually have it in manual, hence it's set there, you can see. And then I just either just fix it in sport mode or, or run between these three but just by tapping this. But yeah, it's really good. It's really exciting to have everything on, on a screen like this. Um, I think this is the future going forward. Well, I just need to grab some tea bags. What's good about that is you can actually leave it in the car. Effectively, if you're just using your smartphone to do it, you could just leave it in the car. Whereas the power box is a bit dodgy just leaving that, you know, at the side because someone could just easily reach and just nick it. Right, in usual Kirby style, it is a couple of days later. Got something to show you guys. This box turned up the other day, um, a couple of days ago actually, but I haven't bothered filming anything. But So in here we've got a bunch of drill bits, which is not what I was gonna show you. Um, so you can see here some bolts. And what we've got, these are the spacers. So these are the spacers for the, for the wheels. So, and um, that's like a 25 mil, uh, let's say on here, 25 mil spacer. And that basically converts, as I was saying, it converts the three stud to a four stud pattern. So you can see you've got two, um, you know, two sort of inset holes there, which are actually for these, because you get a set of two in that box and then there's another two in there, in the other box. Um, and then you've got these, so that goes in there that goes straight into the hub of the Twizy. Same on that one. And then you've got these extra long bolts that go through the wheel because obviously the third um, hole is actually shared with the fourth one or the whatever number it is on there. So you've got basically your four studs. So that converts it from a three to a four, gives you and gives you a little bit more space so you can put a little bit wider wheels. So yeah, as I say, I've got two of them. They're really nice actually. Come from Elia, Elia Tuning. So on the subject of wheels, 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 um, I actually changed my mind because I was looking at those ones earlier on in this video. I was looking um, at the ones which are like kind of the, the sort of um, deep dish type ones, look really good. They weren't as light as I thought um, because obviously that's without a tire. So 
what I was trying to do is trying to find, and they were 15s as well. So, you know, going up in size and, and everything else, even though, you know, you're 13, the difference between 13 and 15 is probably, you know, that's my little dog snoring, by the way, in the background. Um, yeah, so the difference between, probably wouldn't be that much. But in the end, I decided to go with like a racing spec wheel, um, very, very light, kind of the original one I was looking at in the, um, in the video where I showed you the Photoshop mock-up. Um, so basically, yeah, Team Dynamics, um, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's, it's basically kind of like a, a kind of multi-spoke thing. It's similar to what, it's a, it's a similar kind of look to what's on the F1 Twizzy. Um, if you've seen that, it looks really good. It's not like a deep dish, it's only like a seven um, inch rim. So I'm gonna put 185s on it. Um, you might get a bit of tire stretch on there. So I've got 185s on there. And those wheels are basically on their way. So they're on the way from, um, from the guys that are sorting me out with those. And um, yeah, exciting. So I'll get those spacers on uh, when the wheels turn up, obviously, and then um, we can get those wheels on. But yeah, they're, they're very light. They, they weigh something like about four, four kilos, four, 4.5 kilos, and he's actually managed to get the race spec ones, which I think are even lighter, um, because they don't have some center hub caps or, or all of that sort of thing. So it's gonna be good, guys, I think. I think we're gonna find that, um, you know, we're not gonna be that much over in weight for those wheels so we should see similar performance but obviously a lot better performance on cornering because you've got the wider um the wider track on there yeah it's gonna be good so hopefully tomorrow hopefully tomorrow right we've got wheels guys looks nice that just just feels like a different animal totally different base, base.